and welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. And the red light's rolling. Mr. Mike Vickers, how are we doing? I'm all right, thanks, uh, Pete. Yes, it's um, we we're just uh, before we came on air. There, we just sort of noting that uh, Pete is branded and I'm not, which is unusual because it's normally the other way around, isn't it? But uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, my my excuse is I'm 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 absolutely. As we record this, we're going through a bit of a heat wave, aren't we? So uh, I am roasting hot, but uh, yeah, you you and me both, mate. And I'm looking particularly red faced or red headed um, with the green and grey background. <laughs> there's no filtering yeah. out that, that no that filtering no no red face, the glare red face. Off the yeah. so it. had a nice day yesterday mate to be fair because like you say the weather's been pretty good and uh Tallulah was at a football tournament in Willingham my old school Willingham. ground and yeah. um yeah there I was uh in the sunshine all day mate all day she made it to the final, which was good, and then lost in the final. So, well, yeah, tears and tears and everything, mate. Tears well, and everything. Oh, yeah, but that, that, do you know what? That's an achievement, though, and it gets to a final, isn't it? Exactly. And she's Brilliant. dead proud today. She's Nobody dead really, proud today, yeah. to be fair. Nobody so, really wins um, or loses, do they? If they, if they enjoy themselves, everyone's a winner. But yeah, it's. it's exactly, mate. Exactly. Next yeah, time, yeah, next yeah. time. As a Pompey supporter, I'm quite used to saying that. Next time, next season. <laughs> <laughs> and that random. definitely tests that definitely tests the old positive mental attitude doesn't it yeah <laughs> yeah so mate yeah. it's a little while since we've both been on the fleet geeks podcast you've done a couple on your own and and here here we are recording recording this one which is fascinating mate we're going to be having a little look at the recent very recent as we record this one hour ago it states that the dvsa um reported the, uh, the, the this over overweight incident with a massive fine at the City of London Magistrates. Yeah. It, I, do you know what? I was flicking through, uh, I think it was LinkedIn or Facebook, and I saw this post from the DVSA, and I thought, oh, they got the, they got the, there's something, they've got something wrong here. They've put too many noughts on that fine. But, uh, yeah, just look at that fine, folks. £472,815. That I've never seen some, a fine like that. Not 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 from the construction use book. That's fine, and and that's not the only thing. There's some detail in the post there around seventy five grand spent on um, weight weight cameras, not weight cameras. Oh, weight measuring tools, weight measuring yeah. equipment. Yeah, seventy five grand. So they've actually spent five hundred and fifty grand. Absolutely, that's, a, that's an expensive. Uh, I think I, I read down one or two of the comments, and uh, some people commented, "Wouldn't it have been easier to use a bigger truck in the first place?" And I think, you know what, that's up for me is always the starting point when you talk about anything to do with construction and use, weights, sizes of load, that sort of thing. Is the vehicle fit right for the job? You know, have they got the right vehicle for the job? But uh, clearly, in this case, <laughs> that's cost them half a million quid. They could have bought a fleet of. Of uh, top line Scania's uh, Arctic's for that, couldn't they? Would uh, if they'd have thought about it. But uh... yeah, so that that's a whopping fine, mate. So uh, there's been a few questions actually on the post already. From there was an RHA chap on there under what law? Under what law as uh, as this prosecution happened? And it isn't under the Health and Safety at Work nope. uh, Act, is it? So uh, Mike, what 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 do you think this could be? What's caused? So, well, yeah, first so of all, is... first of all, it's a seven and a half ton vehicle, right? And how overweight was it? 74%. Well, I think this is where they have got their numbers a little bit wrong. I think and then it talks about 13 ton. Well, of course, 100% overweight for a seven and a half tonner would only be, uh, what would it be, 15 tons, wouldn't it? So I think the vehicle weighed in at 13 tons, which would put it 74% overweight uh, for, um, for, for a seven and a half tonner. So I'm guessing the payload on that would be around about four tons or so. Um, uh, Curbside. That's, a, that's, a, that's a good point, actually, because the maths is taking into account the total weight. Isn't into, it? Yeah, actually, yeah. the overload is huge. So I'll help my uh, I'll help my good friends at the RHA out there and just to say that that's um, that's construction use uh, regulations. That is, 
Um, and uh, it's causing or permitting. So uh, I'm, it doesn't go into detail about what the driver, whether the driver faced any form of prosecution for that or not. But that would have been certainly regulation 100 of the construction and use regulations. It wouldn't have been a health and safety breach, I don't think. I mean, they don't give us, uh, you know, to be fair, they don't actually give us the detail. But um, I, I'm pretty certain that would be... Um, um, under the construction use regulations, um, causing or permitting. Now, um, it's a uh, now on the scale. I think it's a, an unlimited fine. Pardon um, the pun. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be on <laughs> the the unintended scale, pun. Well, that was a bit heavy. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'll take a load off that. I'll take a load off of everybody's mind by suggesting that yeah that now they've got onboard Wayne equipment they won't get that problem yeah. but yeah that'll so take, I'm, I'm... that'll take the tire pressure off <laughs> yeah it, it looks to me like let's say they don't actually tell you but it looked and I was actually I looked at the uh, I was trying to look at the court case to see if you could actually get any any details of it so but but I can't see any reason why it wouldn't be construction and use regulation uh, regulation 100 um, unlimited fine based on aggregating and mitigating factors. So um, it is what they know. Uh, it is an absolute offence. Well, there are two of there are two defences against overloading, but an absolute offence, generally speaking, what that means is there's no defence against it. Like we didn't know, we didn't weigh it, we were told it didn't weigh that much, and you know that that, that you can't use a defence because uh, there is no defence apart from you're on your way to the nearest weigh bridge. Uh, to ascertain the load, uh, to see if you can take any off, or the the, the uh, load has changed as a result of the weather. Well, obviously it hasn't in that case. Um, so I'm guessing that that's the reason. Aggregating and mitigating factors, though, that seems like a that seems like a a, a lot of um, uh, aggravating factors, and not many not many mitigating factors. in that, okay, so I would imagine. Yeah, absolutely. And I think just for just for people's clarity who are listening, if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll be able to see that we are sharing the LinkedIn page, that that post that the DVSA have posted. You can actually see that on there. And obviously, if you listen on the podcast, you can't actually see the information. But for those of you that can't see the information, what this is telling us is that there's been a major electrical wholesaler, uh, which has fined nearly half a million quid for being 74% overweight on a seven and a half tonner. We're not sure about the, the maths they've used there, but nonetheless, they've got 13 ton load of electrical cable on a seven and a half ton vehicle. Uh, and it's meant a fine of nearly 473 grand. And uh, they've also had to spend 75 grand on weighing equipment for their vehicle. So uh, someone commented about great salesman from the weighing weighing company <laughs> to have sold seventy five grand. I'm assuming that isn't just for one vehicle. I'm no, that won't be on a fleet vehicle. of. I'm assuming yeah. that's on a fleet of a fleet of vehicles. Uh, um, and and we, we are certainly no salespeople for those kind of people who sell weighing uh, uh, devices. But I've got to be honest. I you know from my experience of them, they're incredibly good value for money because yeah, uh, well, they're worth know, their weight in gold, Mike. Worth their weight in gold, <laughs> aren't they? Then yeah, they absolutely are. So no, no fair point about we we don't. It doesn't actually tell us what what law that that was, uh, but what, what they were taken to court. I've, I mean, I, I you know yes, it could have been health and safety at work at, but uh, unfortunately, they don't tell us, so we don't know. Um, but yeah, construction and use, um, you know, absolute offence, no defence against it, apart from the two statu- you know, t- the two defences that you can use. And obviously both of those are, ne- you know, neither of those are, are relevant in this case. Um, wow, that's a, that's, a big old, that's a big old chunk of money, isn't it? But uh, speculation is now rife as to who the uh, electrical wholesaler is. Well, I wish yeah. we, we, can't, we can't name names because... Uh, because the again, again <laughs> the law of defamation and and slander, but uh, yeah, I mean there can't be that many in the country I can think of. But hello, it's Sharni from Flagship Partners. We are really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. If you need expert advice or training for your fleet business, make Flagship Partners your first choice. We are really excited to announce the launch of our Transport Manager Academy with expert development for fleet leaders. We offer fully accredited initial transport manager CPC training, CPC refresher and operator license awareness training, as well as mentoring, support and professional development beyond the qualification. Our vision is to develop elite fleet professionals.
Yeah, it's in, it's interesting that um, it's interesting that they're not allowed to share share who it is because I think I'm pretty. Oh no, in the Health and Safety at Work Act, I don't think they do actually Health and Safety. No, they don't. There we go. There we go. They don't name them, but uh, it's usually very clear who it is, though. <laughs> yeah, and uh, I suppose one of the you know for, for my mind, one of the um, dangers there is electrical cable reels. I mean, they don't look a lot, do they? They don't. You know, to, to look at them. If it, we always had that thing, you know, with with the old three and a half ton um, Mercedes Sprinters. You know, a lot of people, if it fits, it, it's it's okay. But of course, a three and a half ton, you know, a Sprinter or Transit or something like that's huge, you know, massive things. Um, but of course, you know, you can't fill them up because if you fill them up, you're going to be overweight massively. So, um, I remember once. Um, a little bit of a mix up with um, with uh, some instructions to a driver as to what load to pick up out of a book wholesaler. Um, uh, uh, and uh, this guy comes back into the yard with a seven and a half tonner that was looking like it was uh, looking like it back in the seventies and the eighties, we used to put sort of uh, suspension jacks on the back of Ford Cortinas and things, you know, and the thing sits up like right up on uh, right up on the back wheels and down on the nose. And this seven and a half tonner come in the yard looking like that. And it was, you know the, the driver, so it's only so, you know it's only sort of four or five pallets of books. Well, God, oh, God, give me the weight on those. You know that's why that's what you weren't supposed to collect. The, the other guy coming in the eighteen tonner was going to get those. So you know it, I can see how these things do do happen in the real world, but um, that's a very expensive mistake, isn't it? You know, getting a parking ticket is one thing, but getting a four hundred eighty odd thousand quid fine is another. Thing. No, absolutely, and I, I really think the DVSA have missed a trick by. Uh... By saying uh, he- by not titling this a uh, heavy fine for electrical wholesale, yeah, yeah, or something, yeah. something along those lines. But there we go. We're not the copywriter for the DVSA. No, I'm no, not they sure do try. I'm not sure they're they... allowed that punnage. Are they allowed that kind of? Punnage? They, they do. Okay, do you know what they get? Uh, is an interesting uh, little bit of a side debate. Then I follow lots and lots of people like the police forces up and down the country and and the DVSA. And you know what? If they try to use a little bit of humour, they get absolutely slated. Um, but I guess that's just the world we live in, isn't it? It's like uh, I think yeah. they should. It brings them. You mean you mean you mean the same world where they have to put a rainbow flag on the DVSA's logo? Well, there you go. So they feel compelled to put the rainbow flag on the DVSA's <laughs> logo, like everybody feels compelled to do so. And I think. Um, you know, my view on that is that, you know, if you're made to do something or you're for it's groupthink, isn't it? It's like, well, if we don't, is that going to make us look like we're we're bigots and you know, all the rest of it? Well, of course you can not. you can just see the conversations at H at HQ yeah. at a high level around um <laughs> I imagine it must be so like some kind of sitcom or something, to be fair. But yeah, uh, yeah. let's not let's not comment any further. Go down that get avenue. ourselves yeah get ourselves into some controversy because we're not really in for any controversy are we mate um no, but um yeah very interesting and and if anything if anything hopefully we've taken a bit of a light-hearted sorry again yeah. on the pun <laughs> uh, a bit of a light-hearted look at obviously a very serious topic um but hopefully this is a good resource because actually we're pre- preaching to the converted because largely transport managers are listening to this but hopefully it's an interesting um, podcast for you to share with your operators. Um, you know, when you're having that conversation with them, and I've certainly had them before, particularly people who have run seven and a half tonners, I'm not going to name names, um, but they are no longer a customer of ours, where they've just said they're going to ignore ignore the weight boundaries that they've got to operate in, having been picked up overweight a couple of times. So, um you know, I think it's uh, I think it's very interesting, and I think there's a lot of transport managers probably have a bit of a challenge around loading, particularly with seven and a half tonners. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah, exactly. The the lower the, the weight, the smaller the vehicle, the more challenging it becomes because yeah. the, you know I often bang on about um, in in our courses. I often bang on about it's it's not so much gross vehicle weight overloads a lot of the time. It's it's individual axle weight overloads, and it's so easy to overload on axle just by having load in the wrong place and not shifting it around when you've delivered some stuff. So, uh, and I always say to people that, you know, that one of the challenges is you can go out the yard spot on with your weight. You can go out absolutely bob on with your gross vehicle weight and your axle weights being spot on and you can deliver stuff during the day and end up with a, a ticket for being overweight and how, you know, the people say, well, how, how so, you know, if you're losing load as you go along, 
Uh, and it's a fact, simple fact that you're now overloading one axle or the other. And um, it's uh, something people forget about, especially at this lower end of the scale at the seven and a half tonners. So we'll, we'll, yeah, I'll yeah. weigh it all up. Um, just and I'll keep an eye on this, see if I can find any more information out to see where that prosecution came from. But um, um, yeah, uh, you know, it's uh, it's yeah, anything anything you can do to add a bit of gravity to the situation, mate. And um... yeah, <laughs> oh dear, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, it's been horrific. It's been horrific, isn't it? Yeah. Um, thank you, people, for listening. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this podcast. Absolutely. And, uh, see, we'll you see you on the next one. Uh, on the next one. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.